Hey and welcome to Neverwinter the Aragon. So let's go over the best artifacts you should have within Neverwinter, in particular when you're running said dungeons or trials that are particularly challenging and you want to have an artifact call. Without an artifact call, your damage is going to be drastically inferior to a group that does. And the content, unfortunately for some, is balanced around having artifact calls, since all the private testers for the game use artifact calls, as that is the most optimal way to output the most damage. If we didn't use it when testing, then content would just be a steamroll for those people who did. So artifact calls, really important. What does it entail? Well, everybody to use their primary artifact at the same time. What do you do with that? Well, you combine it with your daily power. So you might have a really hard hitting daily power combined with a mount power that's also really hard hitting. For example, your tunnel vision, which 3000 magnitude. And each of those take about a minute before you get them back. And that's exactly in alignment with your artifact call of 60 seconds. So every 60 seconds, you're using your artifact plus your daily power plus your mount power. And that is for massive burst damage. So what are the best artifacts, the top artifacts you should be using? I have a whole bunch of them here. I still miss a few on this character. And you will note they all have something in common, like reducing the enemy's damage resistance or increasing the damage they take or increasing your party member's damage. They all benefit everybody who's attacking that one target. So for boss fights, and those are the best artifacts. Those artifacts that are going to increase everybody's damage, meaning those hits of every 60 seconds become even bigger. That's where arises the burst damage. So I've made a spreadsheet and you can see it right there with the list of all the artifacts that are going to increase you and your party's damage. You could run a personal artifact that only supports you, but what happens if your teammate does as well? then you'll all end up losing out in damage. So you can see this is them all ranked from the worst to the best. Now you can see these ones are literally the same. It doesn't matter how Blast Scepter or Mithilar, doesn't matter which rank they're on. I would rank Mithilar slightly better. It's got better stats for a DPS and it's also got higher item level. But in terms of it giving everybody damage, it's exactly the same. And we filtered that there then. And one thing that's very important is that normally artifacts do not stack with each other. You cannot have everybody using, let's say, a Halaster's Blast Scepter or a Mithilar Fragment, as those effects will not stack. So you need everybody to have a unique artifact in your group. That is generally the way it goes. Every now and again, there might come a bug where one artifact will be able to stack multiple times and that usually gets fixed out of the game soon enough. And so with that list, you can see if you're running a 10 man group, these are pretty much the 10 artifacts you want. These 10, there's 11 of them right here. So you can pick and choose for yourself, just taking out some one of these 10% ones. And that's what you would go with. There are in red, the Jewel of the North, the Thirst and the Token of Chromatic Storm. The reason for this is that like Thirst, it will cause you to move. You can cancel the animation which causes you to move like that, but it can be a little bit tricky and sometimes you might fail and it could lead you to your death. So it could not really be feasible to have that on a certain class. And then there is the token, which unfortunately has the ability to be able to miss its acid effect, which causes the target to take damage and thus it becomes not great to use. And then there is also the jewel of the north, which has the same move effect as thirst, but you actually can't cancel it. So those three are in red and I wouldn't recommend them. And then you can see the rest of them down there. They only have like 5%, so I wouldn't recommend them compared to these ones. And since I last made this video, if you've seen my older one, we've had added in the Assassin's Dice, the Tentacle Rod. We've also had the Dragonbone Blades, which are not stacking with the Wyvern. So you need to have either or, that is it. And we also have the Black Dragon's Mark. And then we still have the rest of them here. Just keep in mind that 
Each of them have their own different benefits and they will depend on what benefits you already have. For example, we take the Assassin's Dice and you could see it would add like 5% crit severity. And so it can be overall like a 13% increase in damage. But that is when you have no crit severity. When you increase your crit severity to like 90% and then you go over the cap to 95%, this effect will have lessened. But that's the same with stacking multiple different debuffs. For example, if we were to stack like all of these debuffs in a trial, including the debuffs from your mount powers, you'd end up with like 149%, something crazy like that. And so if we're to take the artifact like the Tentacle Rod, which has a 5% increase versus something we take with has a 10% increase, you can see the Tentacle Rod becomes more appealing because it also adds to your combat advantage, which is like it's only 90% and you're only increasing it to 95% versus from like from 144% to 149%. So yeah, you can see what I mean there. It's all about the balance. You want to have the numbers all about the same, but ultimately you can take this with pretty much guarantee that these are the top 11 artifacts you want to be having in your group. So if you're just running a dungeon and you would ideally have like these these five right but it wouldn't matter so much with having the assassin's dice compared to just one of these and yeah it's in the end not a big deal some of them have longer duration than others you can keep that in mind but a general artifact call is just 10 seconds so what you would do in an artifact call normally is you'd go you'd attack your enemy you'd make sure you have combat advantage against them and then once somebody calls artifacts you press your artifact and then you do your attack, casting your encounter powers. I'm not a DPS right here. But before the artifact is over, you'll use like your daily and your mount. And what I mean by that is as soon as the artifact gets to 50 seconds, you know 10 seconds has passed. So you can time it on the artifact. When it shows like 55 seconds left, that's when I go and cast my daily and my mount. Because that will give that first five seconds enough time for let's say everybody in the group to have cast their artifact as well allowing everybody to deal a ton of burst damage on their daily powers and their mount powers it's it's invaluable you cannot miss out on that if you're trying to do end game content so feel free to screenshot this right here and when you're sorting groups when you're trying to make a team just have a look at what other people are using in terms of their artifacts and try sort it out so that you're each using a different one and then you'd ideally have somebody who's going to call artifacts now what i do to call artifacts if i'm just in random groups and actually i do it all the time is i have this keybind right here without the space in the front and you can just copy that and what allow you to do is to very simply when you go and actually you paste that in there and click enter when you are to go and cast your artifact you'll have it pop up in chat just like here i go press it a few times and we get artifacts announced in the chat just there everybody knows then the artifact call has started and everybody else needs to respond with casting their artifacts and then again once five seconds have passed you then use your mountain daily powers you want to use of course your encounters while you're at it within that duration or of course the most optimal damage output and ultimately again that is my list right there. I have tested out all of these guys and they do indeed work, which is great. Again, I wouldn't really recommend these three as Token Can Miss, Thirst and the Jewel will have you moving. Your Book of Wild Darkness is here, but it's a, it's like a 33% chance that you actually get the damage boost as there are three effects and there's only a chance to get like the one you want and the damage effect would be 15 percent but since you're only going to get it 33 percent of the time i put an average at five percent but i actually wouldn't even take this one over yeah just having a base five percent guarantee during each artifact call that would generally be better <laughs> an erratic grip globe is down there like four percent because you're only reducing the enemy's deflect chance and sigil and i'm there as well and overall hopefully this helps you guys out a bit as well if you are a dps player and want to have new artifacts i would highly recommend having the tentacle rod the dragonborn blades and the assassin's dice they're like the three best artifacts right now for giving you all offensive stats for a dps player however keep in mind you cannot unbind the assassin's dice or the tentacle rod as of now so 
it might be later down the line, but you can't then transfer it between other characters, which could be pretty important. And it's not like all DPS players can only have these three. You need another three different ones if you're running in a trial. Yeah, so just be aware of that. And it can be best to make sure you have a variety of the ones here. So hopefully this is somewhat insightful, you guys. And before we go, a special thank you to all of these channel members for the added support. And we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.